Today I will be talking about what is probably the most uh, beautiful and uh, most uh, profound part of optimization which is called duality. This is a subject that arises specifically in optimization due to the very way by which we go about deriving solutions of optimization problems. I will explain what this uh, what, what duality means. So, suppose we have a linear program like this. So, today I am going to limit to linear programming duality. So, suppose you have a linear program which is written in standard form like this. The decision variable here is x. Now, corresponding to this linear program, I will write another linear program which is this one. So, the first linear program is minimizing c transpose x subject to a x equal to b and x greater than equal to 0. This one is in standard form. The second linear program is maximizing b transpose y subject to a y a transpose y less than equal to c subject to a transpose y less than. This is not in standard form, but it has been written in this uh, I have written this particular problem for a specific reason and I will explain what that reason is uh, soon. So, you have a LP here on the left hand side uh, which is a minimization LP, the, uh, the LP on the right hand side is a maximization LP. Now, what we uh, the, the constants involved here that means, the, the B that is there in this uh, the objective of this is the same as the B that is in the right hand side here. The, this we are talking of the same b. This the c that is in the objective here is the same as the c that is that is in the right hand side here. The the a uh, matrix here is the same as the a matrix here. Only thing it has been transposed and written in the constraint. The so these problems are uh, are involve the same set of constants but arranged in a in a in a certain specific way. You will also notice that. Here, there is an equality constraint because this was in a standard form, whereas this has an inequality constraint. All right. Here, the x is greater than or equal to 0, but here the y is unconstrained, there is no constraint on the side. So, the, the, L, the LP on the right hand side, this is specifically crafted, okay. it is very specifically crafted with, with to have this kind of structure. And we will soon see what the what the connection is with the uh, with this with the one on the left. The one on the left we will call it the primal LP, and the one on the right would be called the dual. Now, there is a quick observation you can make. Suppose I gave you any point okay, that is feasible for the primal. So, let us write out some notation here. Let us write uh, this f p as the feasible region of the primal. So, it is x such that a x equals b and x is greater than or equal to 0 and let us write f d as the feasible region of the dual y such that a transpose y is less than or equal to c. Now, can someone tell me what uh, uh, what are the spaces that these sets lie in? So, these are in what is the uh, what is the dimension of x and what is the dimension of y. So, suppose my matrix A is an m cross n matrix, then what is the dimension of x and what is the dimension of y? Yeah. So, the dimension of x is is uh, is x is an n length vector and y is a m length vector right. So, now, so these are not uh, these two optimization problems the primal and the dual they are not on in the same space 
at all. I mean, one is uh, in R n, the other is in R m. One has n uh, uh, decision variables, the other has m decision variables. All right. Yet, what is amazing is that they are they are uh, they are very closely related. So I will show you this. So look at let's make the first observation here. So suppose I take a x. Suppose x belongs to this set F p and y belongs to the set F d. Okay. Now, look at the value c transpose x. Now, look if I look at if I consider c transpose x, now this is the inner product between c and x, x itself is greater than or equal to 0. Right, and x uh, satisfies a x equals b. Is that right? Okay. X is greater than or equal to zero, and x satisfies a a x uh, a x equals b. On the other hand, let's look at this value b transpose y. B transpose y is is the is a value attained by a uh, by a feasible solution y of of the LP on the right. So, y just satisfies A transpose y less than equal to C. All right. Okay. Now, I know that if I know that C look at if I form since y satisf y belongs to F D, okay, I know that C is greater than equal to A transpose y for this particular y. So, I know that C is actually greater than or equal to A transpose y. Now, what I can do is this is a full vector right, C is a vector and y A transpose y is also a vector. Every component of that vector if I if I multiply by a, a number that is non negative, the uh, the inequality in that for that particular component will be preserved right. And then I can add up all those inequalities and get a, a get a, a get a scalar inequality uh, using all of those. So what I'm doing, what I'm going to do now is just take an inner product with x. X I know is a vector that's non-negative. X lies here, lies in F p. Okay, x is a is lies in F p. It's a vector that's non-negative. So what I I can do is I can take an inner product with x. So which means that would give me x transpose c is greater than or equal to x transpose a transpose y right i'm talk i'm referring to this specific x and this specific y that i have chosen an x in fp and and a y in fd so i just multiplied x on both sides and the inequality uh, so it took inner product with x and the inequality is preserved Right, because every component of x is greater than or equal to zero. Right, so I, so from from here, uh, from from this equation, I was able to go to this equation, no problem. But now, what? Look at the right hand side. Right hand side is actually the same as a x, the whole transpose y. And let me write the left hand side also better. Let us write the left hand side as since it is just an inner product, let me write it as C transpose x. So, I have basically C transpose x greater than or equal to A x the whole transpose y. Now, I make my other observation. Well, again, my x belongs to F p, x belongs to F p, which means A x is actually equal to b. A x is actually equal to b since x belongs to F p. So, what this means is C transpose x is greater than or equal to B transpose y. Now, notice what has happened here. You have you started off with any point x in F p okay, and for that what I was able to show is I took this value C transpose x 
and I and and I was able to show that C transpose x, okay, C transpose x is actually greater than or equal to B transpose y. I started with any any x in F p and any y in F d and I got this inequality that C transpose x is always greater than or equal to B transpose y. it does not matter what my choice is. Every x that is feasible for the primal and every y that is feasible for the dual must satisfy that C transpose x is greater than or equal to B transpose y. Now, this let us take this one step further. Observe that the optimal the optimization problem P the primal optimization problem primal optimization problem is actually looking for to minimize the looking for the minimum value of C transpose x right. So, if the optimal value exists that means, it is not minus infinity right. If the optimal value exists then the minimum value of the optimization problem is is also going to be greater than equal to B transpose y for every y. So, the minimum value of the primal assuming this exists assuming it exists is greater than or equal to B transpose y and this is true again for all y in F d. But then what is what uh, uh, let us compare that with the dual problem. The dual problem is looking to maximize B transpose y. Now, since this is true for every y in F d, it is also true for the y that gives you the maximum possible value of the dual right. So, therefore, the minimum value in the primal is greater than or equal to the maximum value of the dual. In short, the optimal values of these two linear programs are related in this fundamental way that the min the optimal value of the primal cannot go below the optim the optimal value of the of the dual. The primal is looking to get the least possible value of a certain function of x. The dual is looking to get the maximum possible value of a certain function of y, but they are they have this kind of tension between them. You cannot bring the primal below the optimal value of the dual and you cannot raise the dual any higher than the optimal value of the primal. Okay. Now, this this property is what is called you write this in red it is what is called weak duality. Weak duality simply may refers to this that for any that C transpose x is greater than or equal to B transpose y for all x in F p and for all y in F d. Okay. Now, the uh, remember uh, the thing that I want uh, that I mentioned at the start this uh, these are you you might be first tempted to think that you know there is some uh, this is actually somehow is some sort of simple operation in the sense that say for example, you might be tempted to think like when you are doing minimum minimizing C transpose x uh, it is like trying to come to the bottom of a function and maximizing C to, uh, B transpose y you are trying to get to the maximum of it. It is as if the same function has been flipped. It is not a flip of this ok. It is not like you are taking a reflection of the objective of one to get to the other. These are two problems written on two separate spaces. So, you are not flipping one to get the other there the there is a very there is a specific way in which these they have been crafted which gets gets you to weak duality alright. But, but at the same time it is it is not it is uh, it is it is uh, it, it is really beautiful that you can actually say something like this because it tells you that if there is uh, uh, that that you cannot 
pull down the value of an optimization problem beyond a certain level. If it is a minimization problem, likewise you cannot raise a, the value of the optimization problem if it is a maximization problem beyond a certain level, right. In fact, it, it gives you this the following following results straight away. Let me just state this. If either primal or dual LP is as an unbounded optimal solution, has an unbounded optimal value. If either primal or dual has an unbounded optimal value, means that the value since uh, we are looking to minimize the primal, that means primal value is minus primal optimal is value is minus infinity, or since and we are looking to maximize the dual, that means or dual optimal value is plus infinity. So, either of if either of these two is true, if either the primal is, unbo uh, uh, is unbounded or the dual is unbounded, then the other must be infeasible. So, what this means, what this says is that if the optimal value of the primal is minus infinity, then you cannot have even it cannot be that the dual has a feasible solution. Why is that? Well, what the reason for that is just by weak duality. If the primal value is minus infinity, that means the minimum here is minus infinity then you would get that minus infinity is greater than equal to the maximum value of the dual. Now, in particular it would be greater than equal to the value of the dual for any y right for any y in f d. So, but a finite value of y would give you a finite value of b transpose y. There is no way that that can be less than equal to minus infinity. So, the contradiction is that there cannot be a single y that, that, that satisfies the constraints of the dual, which means the dual has to be infeasible. So, if the primal is unbounded, then the dual must be infeasible. Likewise, if the dual is unbounded, so dual takes value plus infinity, then ca there cannot be a finite value of x uh, which satisfies the constraints of the primal, because then you would get that you have plus infinity here on the right hand side and something something here which is finite, but greater than equal to the plus infinity right. So, that that is also impossible. So, in short if if any of them is unbounded take so primal taking value minus infinity or dual taking value plus infinity, then the other must be infeasible right. So, this also gives you a way of testing if your problem is going to have minus infinity or is going to have an unbounded optimal value, because it amounts to checking if a bunch of other linear inequalities or equations can be satisfied right. So, if just giving you the just as soon as I give you this uh, this LP here the primal LP, I can I, I, I need to uh, I, I can check if this is going to have a uh, minus infinity as the solution. Well, one uh, if uh, if if this if this if a transpose y is less than uh, less than equal to c is satisfied by some y, then it means that the dual is not not infeasible. Then there is no way that this one can have minus infinity as a solution, right? Likewise for the dual. 
right. So, this this theorem the uh, is what is called the the first property is what is called the property of weak duality and this this here the theorem that I just wrote is just a simply a consequence of weak duality. Now, but the theory of duality does not end here because there is an even more uh, powerful result that is out there and that result actually says that these two these two problems if they admit solutions then their optimal values are actually equal. Weak duality simply says that the optimal value of the primal is greater than equal to the optimal value of the dual. It just it only guarantees you a an inequality here, but a stronger property is true which is which simply which says that if both are finite then they are both equal right. So, so that that is what is called that that property is what is called the property of strong duality. Strong duality and the strong duality theorem is this if if either primal or dual has a finite optimal value then so does the other. and these values are equal. So, the if if the primal has a finite optimal value then the dual must also have a finite optimal value and the two values should be should be the same. Likewise, if the dual has a finite optimal value then so does the primal and the its optimal value is so the same as that of the dual ok. So, if one and from the earlier theorem we know that if it does not have a finite optimal value means it has if it is unbounded then the other one must be increasing alright ok. So, now what we will do today is is prove the strong duality theorem ok. So, that is the agenda for today the strong I will prove the strong duality theorem and I will also uh, give you uh, some uh, an application of of the strong duality theorem ok. Now, the one of the strong duality theorem actually rests on one key property of convex sets ok and the property is that way a very a is very easy to see, uh, but it is not that easy to prove. So, suppose I have a convex set here C ok, suppose C is let us say C is closed and closed and convex. And suppose I take a point here x that lies outside C. A simple observation is that I can always draw, I can always find a hyperplane like this, a hyperplane that separates the point x from C what do I mean by separates? Separates means that the point x should lie on one side of the hyperplane and the set C in entirety should lie on the other side ok. So, my hyperplane suppose is, so let me call this point something else, let us call this x star. My hyperplane is suppose x such that A transpose x equals B, then if my, then this sep by separation of the set from uh, uh, of the set C from x star what we mean is well A transpose x star is less than equal to B say it lies on below the hyperplane and A transpose z is greater than suppose greater than equal to B for all z in C the entire hyperplane entire set C lies on the other side. Now, the way I have written this is uh, uh, this this form of separation 
is where I have allowed both these inequalities to be weak, which means both these both the point it is possible for the point x star to lie on the hyperplane, it is possible for the set C to also touch the hyperplane, touch but not cross the hyperplane right, it can so, so you can have equality uh, in both, this is called weak separation. This property is what is called weak separation, but you can also talk of much stronger versions of separation and I will I will we will use a stronger version of separation. In the stronger version both these inequalities will become strict, okay, you will so, so, so it will be like the kind of picture I have drawn here, your point x star lies on the other half in one half space, but not on the hyperplane and the set C also lies in the other half space and not does not touch the hyperplane. This is what is called these theorems that guarantee you something like this are what are called separating hyperplane theorems. Separating they are called separating hyperplane theorems and are one of the key tools for proving uh, proving bounds in optimization. Okay, so, or optimization and several other fields also, where if you want to show that something is impossible, try to show you one of the key uh, ways of uh, useful tools in that is is, to, is through separating hyperplanes. Okay. Now, what is the role of convexity in a separating hyperplane theorem? You can see that by just draw looking for looking at another case, suppose this set C was not uh, not convex like this, but say suppose shaped like this. Okay, and my I had a point x star of this out here. Now, is it possible for me to separate x star from the set C by a hyperplane? No, it is just not possible. No matter how much you try, you, you try to you will never be able to find a hyperplane that separates the two. You can find some other curve that separates the two, but not a hyperplane, right. This is the beauty of convexity. Convexity guarantees you this. Now, so we, uh, now there there are other points that may be separable. Like for example, a point x star that lies here, this may it may be possible to separate from the set C. Okay, but it's not possible for every point outside the set. Right. So in a when you have when your set is, set is convex, you can set it can be separated from every point that lies closed and convex it like uh, it can be separated from every point that lies in the exterior. Okay. 